Fedora 37 rolled out recently and I was wondering how Fedora has improved so much in the last few versions. Fedora has brought significant upgrades in almost all aspects. The user interface, performance, this distribution has upped the game in every way possible. At the same time, Zorin OS 2 has released a new version. Zorin OS 16.2 is now out and honestly, it's on a completely new level. Zorin OS is one of the best operating systems out there, period. It has stunning features and provides a refined user experience. Zorin OS is the premier Linux distribution today. Fedora 37 and Zorin OS 16.2 are the hottest releases of this year end. And if you are wondering which of these to install, you are not alone. Fedora and Zorin could not be farther away from each other. They have completely different origins, different bases and different package managers and they both provide completely different experiences. But they both are remarkable at what they do. So in this video, we'll be seeing how Fedora 37 and Zorin OS 16.2 compare against each other in terms of performance, stability, user interface, application availability and finally see which of these is the best for you, Fedora 37 or Zorin OS 16.2. Starting off with the user interface, Zorin OS looks just splendid out of the box. Zorin OS is a Linux distribution that is revolutionizing user experience. It's changing what people expect when they talk about desktop Linux. Zorin features a customized version of GNOME 3 designed to make the layout simple and familiar. The user interface has been designed with ease of use in mind, making it ideal for both experienced and novice users. With its straightforward navigation, users can access their favorite applications with just a single click and this simple menu makes it easy to find whatever you need. This Windows 7 style desktop is familiar to everybody so anybody can jump in and just start using the system. This bottom panel based workflow makes it really easy to open and work with multiple apps at the same time. The Zorin OS user interface also includes several customization options to suit individual preferences. Zorin Appearance lets you choose from 4 different pre-configured layouts which are just as refined. All the major desktop layouts are available here and are activated with a single click. This makes Zorin perfect for you no matter what your desktop preferences are. But of course, what we get out of the box is the best one in my opinion. Also, you can go ahead and tweak the theme and the accent colors here. Zorin appearance allows users to tailor their experience exactly how they want by giving us these options. Moving on to Fedora 37, we get the all new GNOME 43 here. The latest version of GNOME brings major changes to Fedora's user interface. Firstly, the quick settings have been completely redesigned. The old style drop downs have been replaced with these trendy pills. Now you can toggle Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, Nightlight and the theme with just a single click. The desktop also looks more modern now. Fedora not only looks different than Zorin OS, but it also has a completely different workflow. While Zorin has a bottom panel based workflow, Fedora offers us something entirely different. GNOME desktop has a keyboard mouse combo workflow. Basically, you press the Windows or the Super key for everything. You want to open an app, press the Super key. You want to search for a file, Super key. Want to switch applications, Super key. Workspaces, Super key. You get the idea. Once you master working like this, it can be a huge productivity booster. Fedora also has a cool dark mode. This is in fact dark mode done properly on Linux. This doesn't force dark theming on third party apps and break the look. Only apps that support dark mode are suggested to use the dark mode. At the moment, not all third party apps support this but as they are updated, they'll get this soon. Also, these dynamic wallpapers are just amazing. They react to system wide modes and the result is just fantastic. While I highly prefer Zorin OS default desktop layout, the new GNOME on Fedora enticed me with its premium polish. Both Zorin OS 16.2 and Fedora 37 are absolute stunners in the user interface department. They impress with their looks and they both have their own workflow styles. Now looks can be subjective. I like one, you might like the other. So I'll give them both a point each for their gorgeous user interfaces. A new cohort of my Linux Mastery live coaching program is starting soon, where I'll take you right from installing a Linux distribution to an advanced Linux user. You'll start with the fundamentals of Linux and master more than 100 commands. Then we'll proceed to master shell scripting, Linux system administration, Linux networking and many more advanced topics and the whole course will be live so you'll be learning from me in real time and getting all your questions answered at the same time. So book your spot right now. Moving on to stability and usability, this is where we see huge differences between Zorin OS and Fedora. Zorin OS is an Ubuntu based distribution. It's a long term support distro with a life of around 5 years. 
so it will be supported with security and package updates for a long time. Fedora 37 on the other hand will be supported for 13 months. Anything around a year is still good but I want you to mind this difference as it can be a make or break deal for many people. The shorter life cycle of Fedora also means it brings us much newer package versions compared to Zorin OS. The software you install will be comparatively newer versions. Packages on Zorin, although slightly old, tend to be more stable and reliable. Zorin uses Ubuntu software repositories and the packages there are very well tested and dependable. Fedora on the other hand can behave unpredictably at times and it can cause reliability problems but it is a rare occurrence. There's also a philosophical difference between Zorin OS and Fedora. Zorin OS makes everything easy. Installing software, making customizations, tweaking up things, everything is fairly simple with Zorin. Fedora on the other hand provides you full control. You can do anything you want here, provided you know what you're doing and you are ready to spend some time with your system. Zorin OS is created with the average home user in mind and that's a good thing. It would mean a lot less attention and time spent on the OS itself. Fedora on the other hand might need some attention. Both are great systems but Zorin is more beginner friendly and Fedora requires that you play around the system a bit. So in the stability and usability department, Zorin OS takes the point home. In the software department, there are radical differences between Fedora and Zorin OS. Fedora has a very good software availability. It provides a good number of well-tested and fresh packages in its official repositories. Most software that you want can be installed directly from the software store here. We also get Flatpak support out of the box here. You can just enable Flatpak and Flathub repos in the software store and you'll get access to thousands of software in their latest versions and they'll all work without any issues. Fedora is rather strict in enforcing openness of packages that are distributed through its official repositories. Only open source software are available officially. While this makes Fedora a great choice for privacy conscious and people who are specific about this issue, it can also be limited in software availability. To overcome this, we can install software from third-party software repositories like RPM Fusion. RPM Fusion significantly increases the number of software available on Fedora and it's a fantastic repository to have enabled on Fedora. Also, most software vendors create an RPM package that can be downloaded and directly installed on Fedora. Moving on to the Zorin side, Zorin OS is one of the best operating systems in this regard. I'm not saying a Linux distribution, but an operating system. Zorin OS scores a masterstroke in the software availability department. You can install anything you want here. When I say anything, I mean anything. This is mind blowing, hear me out. Firstly, you can install any software you want from the Ubuntu software repositories as well as Snaps since Zorin OS is based on Ubuntu. This alone is invaluable. Then Zorin OS 16.2 ships with Flathub integration. Flathub is the biggest library of modern Flatpak apps. This allows you to install the latest of all the software with enhanced privacy and better than before reliability. Flatpaks are flawless in a sense that they'll work without any issues. They are packaged with their dependencies and necessary libraries to ensure an impeccable user experience and that's exactly what they deliver. Are we done? Not yet. You can download Windows games and apps from the internet and just double click on them and they'll install on Zorin OS. But that's not all. First, Zorin OS will check if the particular app is available natively in the Zorin App Store and will give you a one-click option to install that. If not, you can go ahead and install the .exe or .msi file like you're on Windows. This feature has been enhanced even more in this release. And the software store here deserves special mention. This software store here is clean and organized. It's flourishing with amazing apps across categories. Any software you want can be installed in any format you want by selecting here three package managers and so much complexity under the hood. But all the user sees is a clean, organized and easy to use software store. Zorin OS scores major points in the software department. Fedora has good software availability too, but Zorin really outshines Fedora. Talking about the performance, both Zorin OS 16.2 and Fedora 37 perform on par with each other. GNOME 43 on Fedora 37 comes with many performance improvements and runs fluid smooth. Zorin 2 runs very smooth, app opening and switching are quick and nimble on both these distros. Fedora comes with a much newer kernel and it incorporates many advancements such as Z standard compression on BTRFS, AMD P state drivers which collectively give a significant speed boost to Fedora. Zorin 2 is very optimized under the hood and provides a power packed experience for both general as well as heavy computing needs. Both the distributions get a point each in the performance department. Gaming on Linux has reached a whole new level which no one could have predicted even 5 years ago. 
Today, you can play thousands of top titles on Linux, irrespective of whether the game is available on Linux natively or not. Now, gamers can use Linux to enjoy the same gaming experience that Windows users have had for years. Linux now has a ton of native games. Fedora and Zorin software stores bring many fantastic games right to you. Titles like Zero AD, Nexus, Alien Arena are all downloadable directly here. Along with that, you can now play thousands of Windows games on Linux with ease. GTA 5, The Witcher 3, Cyberpunk 2077, and many more AAA titles are now playable on Linux. What Wine started has now matured and with projects like Sora and Steam's Proton, installing and playing Windows exclusive games has become that much easier. I recommend Steam and Bottles if you want to try these Windows games on either Fedora or Zorin. Both the distributions get a point each in the gaming department. Fedora is a true community-driven project. It's created by the community for the community. And Fedora has an active community which helps out Fedora users with troubleshooting guides, answers to solutions, tips and other documentation. It's very easy to find solutions to issues about Fedora. Even hardware-specific issues can be easily found. A new version of Fedora rolls out every 6 months and brings new things and brings along a few issues as well. The amazing Fedora community members prove to be very helpful then. The forums are active with helpful members and Fedora documentation is very beginner friendly. Moving on to the Zorin camp, Zorin provides well written documentation about all things Zorin. May it be installing Windows apps or setting up gaming, Zorin has very good official documentation. For certain issues, the solutions that work on Ubuntu will work here too. Since Zorin is based on Ubuntu, a lot of Ubuntu documentation and solutions are applicable here too. Just remember that if you have any issues with Zorin OS. Overall, finding solutions to problems, getting answers is very easy on both these distributions. Top points. Zorin OS has a simple installation and setup procedure. The installer is fairly simple with beginner friendly steps. All the options are represented in a simple way here. Download the ISO file, flash it onto a USB stick, live boot into it and start the installer. You'll be guided through the installation. Graphics drivers for all GPUs are pre-installed and you get a ready to use system out of the box. But definitely check out my 20 things to do after installing Zorin OS video to supercharge your Zorin OS installation. Fedora on the other hand does require some effort to set it up. The installation is easy but not as simple as Zorin OS. But still, you can install it in around 20 minutes. Graphics drivers for NVIDIA hardware needs to be manually installed. While there are multiple ways of doing that, I recommend using the RPM Fusion repositories. I will link the commands in the description below. Also check out the 20 things you must do after installing Fedora to, again, supercharge your Fedora experience. Zorin OS is very easy to install and get started with. Fedora on the other hand provides more options and gives you a working system and gives you control to do whatever you want with it. It can be very important to some people including me. But Zorin OS takes the installation point here because of how easy it is to get started with it. Whether you're looking for a reliable platform for work or play, Zorin OS provides an unparalleled user experience that you won't find anywhere else. Zorin OS makes everything simpler, installing software, changing desktop styles, getting started with gaming, it's all as beginner friendly as it can be. Now Linux runs on a lot of things. Zorin OS is desktop Linux done right. It builds on top of the amazing work done by Ubuntu and achieves something that not many other Linux distros can boast of. It gives us a truly beginner friendly desktop Linux and everything works here. If you are a Linux newcomer, I can just recommend Zorin OS to you and I know it will take care of you. Fedora on the other hand is a completely different breed of Linux. It gives you a high quality system and a set of robust tools. It's not necessarily created to cater to the same user base as Zorin OS. Fedora is created for the professionals and advanced Linux users. It gives us a workable system and a robust package manager and you take it on from there. But it does give you a taste of advanced stuff. New technologies, advancements, major technological shifts, they are all brought to you in a consumable way. Along with all these, Fedora also provides a great system for everyday computing. It just needs a bit more attention. Well, if I had to pick one, I'd go with Fedora mainly because it's more fun for me. It doesn't pamper me and give me everything. It makes me put in the effort and do everything manually and I'm at that stage in my Linux journey where I prefer that challenge over comfort. So my personal point goes to Fedora 37. In conclusion, it's Zorin for newcomers and Linux beginners and Fedora for intermediate and advanced users. But by the total tally of points, Zorin OS 16.2 wins by a good margin. The download links for both Fedora 37 and Zorin OS 16.2 are given in the description below. Do check them out.
If you enjoyed this video, definitely consider subscribing to the channel. Also, check out the 15 fantastic Flatpak apps that you must have installed in 2023. This is the next text. See you guys in the next one.